Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on my YouTube channel. My name is Bo Bernier Frank, and I'm a 25 year old surrealist painter based at a Pacific Grove here on the California coast. Today, the episode of choice, it's all about what it's like to have a job and also pursue art, you know, in your free time. In the beginning stages, when you're first discovering your art, first discovering that you have this interest or this curiosity, this thing that you enjoy doing in your free time, just because you like something doesn't mean that you can generate a source of income from that initially. In the beginning stages, when you're just learning about practicing and developing skills and honing in those techniques and that hand-eye coordination, that ability to recreate something on a canvas or in whatever craft or medium that you have, practicing doesn't usually generate funds, doesn't generate you know sales. It's typically just something that you do to hone your skills and improve. So what do you do when you're just trying to understand your art, just trying to understand what kind of relationship dynamic you want to have with that art? If this is something that's just going to stay as a hobby or if it's going to turn into a job or some kind of career or a vocation that you absolutely love doing and also make a living from. So while you're trying to figure this out, it's really great to have some kind of job on the side. This can be a part time job something that allows you to have more free time to then work on your craft and your art. Or it can be a full-time job, which means that when you do have that free time, when you do have that afternoon or that morning or that day off, you're able to focus your attention onto the things that you want to do, which is your art and those practices that you love doing. So the struggle for me, at least personally, when trying to figure out whether art was for me or not, or if this is something that could actually sustain me or if this was a direction that I could see myself doing, not just for this season, but for many years to come, I decided to keep a full-time job and generate income from that source so that I could then redirect that source of income into buying products and buying trips abroad and buying paints and tools and redesigning my studio space, things that require quite a bit of money. So in the beginning stages, relying completely on my art to pay the bills was just not possible. So I continued my job working in the restaurant industry. I really liked that job because it allowed me to have a flexible schedule where I could have you know, certain days off to do certain things and I could take time off to travel if I needed to. And it wasn't something that took up so much of my mental energy and physical energy that when I did get home or was in the morning before I go off to my shift, I still had that love and that attention and that you know want and desire to paint and to draw and to create things with my hands. And so what I realized is that if I allowed my job to take up too much of my time, if I allowed my job to work me to the ground by doing double shifts and you know picking up shifts and focusing all of my attention to just my job, leaving no room for my art, that was when I started to get resentful. That's when I started to get exhausted. That's when I started to not really like my life. So I decided to reframe and readjust and approach it in a mindset that allows me to be grateful that I have a job in the first place. Because in many economies and many countries, just having a place that you can go to to make money is a privilege. It's not something that is typical or something that is the norm. But for me and my culture here in the U.S. and especially here in California on this coast, we're blessed with a really great economy. And so I was able to work at a job that pays me on time, that doesn't cut corners, that doesn't take advantage of me, and that allows me to then on my free time work on my art. I allowed myself to reframe in a way where I felt like my job was not trying to work against me, wasn't trying to suffocate me, wasn't trying to take advantage of me, but was simply a patron to my art. My job allowed me to save up money. My job allowed me to have health benefits so that I could cover my bills. My job allowed me to you know, go travel and have pay time off. Seeing my work as a place to practice my skills as a speaker, practice my skills selling myself and my art, I really learned how to multitask, where I was like, okay, when I go to my job and I clock in for my shift, I'm there for a very specific reason. I'm there to improve myself, you know, be of service to the guests, really experience this moment of connection where I'm speaking directly to people and having this really great relationship with the guests because I'm serving tables. And I'm also learning about how to embellish or how to speak and describe dishes in such a way that it becomes elegant and eloquent and 
you know, approachable and visual. And so all of a sudden I'm developing a vocabulary, a way to speak to people where it touches them directly in the heart instead of talking about the superficial, the basic, you know, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. It's like, let me get to who you are and what you're all about. And let me see if I can approach you in such a way where I can adjust and adapt to you and your needs and offer you something that you want. Even though serving has nothing to do per se with art or painting, all of a sudden these skills, these things that I'm developing on my job are allowing me to be more confident in myself and also in my art. So what this means is that having a job wasn't taking away from my time with my art. It was adding to it. It was mixing it together and through creativity by associating these very different things, I was able to connect them in such a way that really allowed me to develop my skills, develop myself as a person, create connections, and also create sales. So by working in the restaurant, I'm also producing work on the side, which means that I'm building up a portfolio, I'm building up a large body of work. And with this body of work, while I'm working in the restaurant, I'm also trying to sell it online through Instagram, through my personal website, through different uh, gallery spaces. I'm reaching out to different artists. I'm asking them questions. I'm doing research. And so even though I'm not full 100% of my time spending it on art and my career in art, in a way I am because by having this job, it's allowed me to save up money, money that later on will be able to direct to taking classes, even taking courses from other artists, purchasing the materials, buying the flights, you know, buying the shipping materials, shipping the things out there. And when I have a safety net, you know, the savings account that I've developed because of my job, this got, allows me to relax. This allows me to think about the work from a purely artistic standpoint rather than a financial standpoint, where it's not about, will this sell? It's more about what can I do to make this the best art piece that I can? And after doing that, then deciding, okay, how am I going to sell this? How am I going to brand this? How am I going to get my work out there? So in the beginning stages, when I just want to do just art all the time, if you're able to do that, then that is a blessing. That is amazing. And I completely support you in that. But if you're maybe like me and you realize that, hey, I can't sustain myself just for my art right now, but maybe one day I will if I keep working at it, but working at it in the time that I'm not spending at my job. A lot of people have this misconception where it's like artists just purely do art, but it's like, you're not just an artist, you're also a marketer, you're a manager of your time, you're packaging, you're doing you know grunt work and labor, you're also traveling to go to these places to showcase the work, you're also speaking about the art, now you're also writing about your art online, you know, you're creating bios, you're, you're organizing your CV, you're doing uh, outreach and connecting with other artists and other brands and maybe doing collaborations. Maybe you're working with uh, companies and being sponsored as a diplomat or extension of that company. So all of a sudden you need to start learning about skills like negotiations and you know how to uh, manage your funds and how to set yourself up in a way where you can spend time on your art, spend time on selling, spend time on saving, spend time on investing and balancing all these eggs in such a way that you still are allowed to express. You're still allowed to make art that you really enjoy making. And through that, people will really connect with that and you won't have this pressure. So making money doesn't have to be just from the art. You're allowed to have a job. You're allowed to have a part-time job. You're allowed to have two jobs, but never forget that the art is the thing that makes you come alive. That little voice inside your head doesn't have to be little. The more you listen to it, the more you allow it to guide you, to push you in those directions, to push you past your limitations, to reach new heights and successes that previously you didn't think were possible. Those things happen over time and why not make money while you're pursuing that pursuit? So thank you so much for watching this episode on having a job while also making art. Um, you're allowed to do both. And when you feel that you need to do one more than the other, listen to your gut instinct. Don't let anyone tell you what you need to do with your life because it's yours. No one knows you as much as you do. And so listen to yourself first and foremost, seek out guidance, seek out mentorship, You know, do the research, try and grow as a person, but know that you know what's best for you. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you like this video. If you are looking for more content like this, then don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And please let me know what you think about it in the comment section. I'm all about 
getting questions. I'm all about testing myself. I'm all about thinking in new ways. And so if you have a new perspective or if you have a suggestion or an approach that you would like to share, then please go ahead and write it in the comment section. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.